Well, the president-elect elicits calm and prepares to take on the pandemic. Donald Trump now ignores it, instead refusing to concede and continuing to make his baseless claims of voter fraud. Susan Glasser writes this in The New Yorker, quote, Either the president actually believes what he is saying, in which case he is crazy, or he does not, in which case he is engaged in the most cynical attack on American democracy ever to come from the White House. With us for more tonight, John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning author and presidential historian. He's the Rogers Chair in the American Presidency at Vanderbilt University and an unofficial advisor to President-elect Joe Biden. It's so good to see you. So, you know, the question Susan Glasser asks is straightforward. Why are we shrugging it off? But she says we've entered the yeah, whatever phase of the transition. But is there a danger in a yeah, whatever point at this point, John. There is, and I, I must say, I'm, I'm a little upset you, you're making me follow that great line of Susan's. Uh, that's, that's a great sentence, uh, but, uh, but we'll, we'll do what we can to rise to the level she sets. Uh, we've been in a dangerous phase of, yeah, whatever, for about four years, uh, really since President Trump uh, became the front runner for the nomination in, in 2016. It is a perilous attitude to have. Uh, I understand the, the human impulse to uh, think that everything's going to work out, uh, that, that ultimately uh, the, the system works. I, I tend to believe that at heart, but you, the heart and the mind are not always uh, in sync. And I think that we have to take the evidence of our eyes and take the facts of the matter and accept uh, I think what Susan's arguing there, which is that, in fact, uh, the president is trying to undermine the very system that uh, propelled him to the pinnacle of power. We really haven't seen anything like this really since the 1820s, I would argue. And even there, uh, Andrew Jackson, who in 1824 lost the presidency in the House of Representatives, though he had won the popular vote, he came back to Tennessee. He followed the rule of law. He was irritated about it. He called it a corrupt bargain. He gave it a hashtag, but he followed the rule of law. And then he went back into the election in 1828 and ran. And I think one of the fascinating things, and it's what uh, Donald Rumsfeld would call a known unknown about uh, the next couple of years, is to what extent uh, former President Trump is going to be a, an, a force of active and potentially effective opposition to President Biden. So that brings me to what he just said. If you want to start his post-presidential time, Donald Trump, you know, Joe Biden said, look, personally, I don't care. But I think it's as, as a, a sort of a, a important matter for the c continuation of power to have a peaceful transition. Do you agree what you, with what you just heard from Joe Biden that, look, it does matter if he comes to the inauguration in the historical sense? I do. And I think the way uh, the president-elect framed it is exactly right. It, it's both a domestic signal and an international signal that these democratic institutions do work, uh, that despite the ferocity of the, of the hour, despite our polarization, despite our reflexive partisanship, and all the social science, all the political science shows how, how much more polarized we are now than we've been over the last really uh, 40 years or so, uh, that it would send a signal that uh, the system works, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, every, it's a cliche, you know, peaceful transfer of power, you accept the elections, the will of the people. President Trump's not doing that. Uh, it's not a particularly, it's not particularly surprising. Uh, there's been nothing conventional about this. But just because it's, we're accustomed to his abnormality does not make it any less abnormal, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess the other thing, John, is that he's not doing it alone, right? If you talk to reporters on Capitol Hill, yeah. they've been asking a simple question of Senate Republicans. And many of them will simply not say on camera that Joe Biden has won. Is there any historical precedent for that? And where we are no. now, we just mentioned... I mean, yeah. Is he going to? Well, the question is, uh, Republicans right now, are, those Republicans are basically running a kind of political hedge fund, right? They don't know the answer to the question we just talked about. 
to what extent is Trump's power portable from the presidency to the ex-presidency? They don't know it, so they don't want to be on camera saying something that a Trump primary opponent of theirs will use against them. So Trump has made a lot of money, uh, or at least he's made a, a career, out of being a franchiser, right? He, he sells his name. He brands different things. The central, one of the central questions in our politics is going to be, after January, does he become a political franchiser? Will there be a line of candidates on the Republican ballot uh, in primary elections who need his approval, who need his uh, blessing? And will uh, enough Republican voters look for that uh, as opposed to a Republican who is not in the Trump orbit? And so that's an immense amount of power. And it's, uh, it, I don't think, the, you know, the, the, we used to have situations where Republicans in the 1960s would go to Gettysburg, to Eisenhower's farm, so they could have a picture with the, the conqueror of Hitler. You know, I mean, that was a historical thing, right? Uh, people used to go to see Richard Nixon in Saddle River, New Jersey, uh, and have, you know, get some advice. This is so far beyond that, uh, that it's, it's something that is going to be, I think, something that uh, President Biden and the Republican Party are going to have to deal with. And I don't, I don't know that anybody's thought much about it yet. John Meacham, it is always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And coming up, a look behind the scenes at how some hospitals are actually practicing how to best get the first round of doses off the